Can you believe that it's been 12 years since the final Harry Potter film came out? And the actors have a lot of news to share with their fans. How does Daniel Radcliffe feel about being a father? It's, uh, it's crazy. Did Emma Watson completely quit acting? She needs to sort out her priorities. And what new career did Tom Felton almost start after the franchise? Lucky man, lucky man. Daniel Radcliffe. Ever since the series ended, this guy's been trying his best to overcome the one-role curse. On the one hand, he's actually been pretty successful, because Dan's portrayed all kinds of characters, from Frankenstein's assistant to a Nazi and to a guy who doesn't believe in magic. He also played the lead roles in a satirical biopic Weird, The Al Yankovic Story, and a comedy series Miracle Workers. It seems like he's done it all. But on the other hand, Dan is still heavily associated with the boy who lived, and he doesn't really mind. The actor still appears in Potter-related interviews. This year, he executive produced a documentary about his stunt double from the franchise. The guy's name is David Holmes, and he was left paralyzed after a tragic onset accident. He and Dan have always been pretty close, so the actor was glad to honor David's achievements. But this year, Radcliffe has even bigger news. Dan's long-term girlfriend, Erin Dark, gave birth to their baby boy this spring, and the actor couldn't be happier about being a dad. It's crazy and intense, but um, he's wonderful and uh, Erin is amazing. The new addition has definitely changed Dan's life. He doesn't even know when he'll fully get back to acting, because he can't stand being away from his son for a long time. I think I'll probably work a little bit less for the, for the next few years. But Dan's not going to completely stop acting, so don't worry. Now, let's talk about his on-screen best friend, Rupert Grint. Like everyone else in the franchise, he holds Potter close to his heart. In fact, he was so used to playing his character that Ron became his second name. I answer to it if someone calls me Ron, Rupert said. If you ever meet him in person, we dare you to try it. And the actor actually feels pretty good knowing that some other boy will soon play the young Weasley. I'd love to see Harry Potter be adapted into a TV show. I think it would really work, Rupert shared. Since playing Ron, Grint has appeared in many other projects. One of the biggest ones was the psychological horror series Servant that ended with a fourth season this January. In fact, the show was so good that it got praise from the horror experts Guillermo del Toro and Stephen King. Rupert also starred in the apocalyptic thriller Knock at the Cabin. It premiered at the beginning of this year and got pretty positive reviews. And here's a curious fact. When they were filming it, Grint's little daughter joined the set. She did. She had a birthday in the cabin. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of fun. But the actor now wonders if she's going to have flashbacks about it later in life. Anyway, his baby girl Wednesday is already three, if you can believe it. Rupert's baby mama is actress Georgia Groom. They've been together for over a decade. And what about his wife from the Potter series? Emma Watson. After the franchise was over, she began starring in many movies. We saw her in The Bling Ring, Noah, Beauty and the Beast, and Little Women. But ever since Emma appeared in the 20th Harry Potter anniversary reunion two years ago, she hasn't taken on any new roles. Earlier this year, the actress explained why she decided to take a break from acting. Turns out, she wasn't enjoying it. I think I felt a bit caged, Emma said. I was held accountable in a way that I began to find really frustrating. Does that mean that she's done with acting completely? Thankfully, no. Emma's just waiting for the right thing to come her way. And while she's not acting, Emma has more time to devote to other projects. For example, she launched a gin brand, Renee, with her brother Alex, and is also a brand ambassador for Low and Prada. Right now, she's developing her other talents. She's learned how to surf and ride horses, Plus, she adopted a dog in Mexico and directed her first commercial. And what about her personal life? Most recently, Emma was linked to Brandon Green, the son of fashion businessman Sir Philip Green. Allegedly, they were together for about two years, but a few months ago, they reportedly split up. However, we can't say anything for sure because the actress is very low-key about her personal life. Now let's move on to the guy whom she had the biggest crush on, Tom Felton. When he was done playing Draco Malfoy, he decided to become more than an actor. Tom tried rapping and even recorded a few albums. He also started a YouTube channel titled Felt Beats, but after posting five videos, he stopped. 
He still plays music, but only does it for himself now. Thankfully, Tom has never stopped acting. You may have seen him in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Ophelia, and A Babysitter's Guide to Monster Hunting. Last year, Felton also released a memoir titled Beyond the Wand, The Magic and Mayhem of Growing Up a Wizard. He shared quite a few shocking things in it, including the fact that he struggled with addiction for years. Tom couldn't cope with the pressures of fame at such a young age and turned to alcohol. At some point, the actor's friend staged an intervention for him, which Tom describes as painful and humiliating, but it made him check into rehab. That I needed, that I needed help, and I was willing to accept it. And eventually, he overcame the problem. Since Emma Watson's one of his best friends, she was there for him. As Tom once said, she'll always have his back, and he'll have hers. Although, no matter how much fans hope for it, there's never gonna be anything romantic between them. And Tom says that their bond is much deeper than anything that has a name. It's one of the purest loves I can think of, he said. It looks like the actor isn't dating anyone these days. Or maybe he's hiding his partner really well. Anyway, let's move on to the next star. Matthew Lewis. This guy is one of the brightest examples of how puberty can change you. Not only did Neville turn from an awkward boy into a brave warrior, but Matthew also became a completely different person, at least when it comes to his looks. And after the Potter films jump-started his career, he kept on acting. For example, he appeared in the neo-noir film Terminal, alongside Margot Robbie and Simon Pegg. Plus, you could see him on TV quite a lot. Most recently, Matthew starred in the series All Creatures Great and Small. And a few years ago, he played one of the main roles in the sitcom Bluestone 42. In November, the actor shared a throwback to the show on his Instagram and said that it was the best job he'd ever had. I'll be back on the BBC next year working with some of the same people that made this beauty, he added in the caption. Sounds exciting. Apart from acting, Matthew is a vice president of the Leeds Rugby Foundation charity, and he's also a happy husband to his wife of five years. Her name is Angela Jones, and she's an American lifestyle blogger. They have a cute dog together, which they call their fur baby. Now let's talk about another Gryffindor everyone adores. Gary Oldman. It's no wonder Daniel Radcliffe was honored to share the set with him. That's pretty good going out on stage work. Yeah, I did oh, stage as well. I would do a movie a stage, a movie stage, movie stage. After all, the actor has over a hundred credits to his name. In recent years, you could see Oldman in The Woman in the Window and Oppenheimer. He also has a lead role in the spy thriller series Slow Horses. But now, the actor feels that it's time for him to stop. About a year ago, Oldman hinted that he plans to retire. I've had an enviable career, but careers wane, and I do have other things that interest me outside of acting," he said. And he even added that when he's done playing Jackson Lamb in Slow Horses, he'll hang it up. We're yet to see if he changes his mind. Meanwhile, Oldman's personal life has also been quite full. He's been married five times, and his current wife is writer and art curator Giselle Schmidt. They've been together for six years. What about his co-star and on-screen friend? David Thewlis. We've seen this actor a lot since the Potter series ended. Last year, for example, he starred in Enola Holmes 2 and the Sandman series. Now he's set to appear in the third and fourth installments of James Cameron's Avatar. Thewlis also actively uses his Instagram to promote the series The Artful Dodger. It's a spin-off featuring characters from Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. The actor also posts quite a few photos of his daughter Gracie, who turned 18 this year. David shares her with his ex-girlfriend, actress Anna Friel, and these days, he's married to another woman, the French designer and artist Hermine Poutot. Let's wish them all the best and move on to the main villain of the series. Ray Fiennes. Here's another super experienced actor from the franchise. In recent years, he's been in The King's Man, The Menu, and No Time to Die. But people still keep asking him questions related to his time as Voldemort. And last year, he answered a few of them again. The most surprising one is about what he wore under Voldemort's robes. They gave me tights, okay, underneath the long, the long flowing robe. But it didn't work so well because they'd always fall down. So the actor found a solution. So then I said, I need a garter, I need garter belts on each leg. 
and it led to this kind of situation. And I would, I would tease the stunt guys by going, guys, let's get serious. <laughs> Quite a sense of humor he has. And when it comes to his personal life, Fines couldn't be more private. After his marriage to Alex Kingston and long-term relationship with Francesca Annis both ended, he doesn't seem to be dating anyone. Now, tell us in the comments, whose post-Potter story surprised you the most? And if you want to learn more about the actors who left acting after the franchise, watch our video about them.